directed to Professor Jaffrey. Uh, in light of the poorly planned withdrawal from Afghanistan, administration officials have testified that a strengthened Al Qaeda or ISA could launch attacks against us from in Afghanistan uh, as soon as six months. It's particularly important to ensure that the worst of the worst at Gitmo do not rejoin those efforts. The Office of uh, Director of National Intelligence has reported that nearly a third of Gitmo detainees re-engaged in terrorism. At least a dozen have launched attacks against the United States or U.S. forces in Afghanistan, killing at least a half a dozen Americans. So to you, what is the effect of Afghanistan fall to the Taliban and the creation of a safe haven in Afghanistan on the dangers of releasing uh, these detainees? Uh, thank you, Ranking Member Grassley. Uh, I think the, the situation in Afghanistan and our precipitous withdrawal, the detriment of that cannot be understated. The Taliban, who hosted Osama bin Laden on the day of the attacks, of the day of the 9-11 attacks, are now have now returned to power. Within their ranks, the Haqqani Network, the leader of the Haqqani Network is a senior minister in their government, is the deputy head of the Taliban. They have refused to comply with all but one of the conditions in the Doha Agreement reached in order to facilitate the withdrawal of the United States from Afghanistan, including the condition requiring them to renounce and reject Al-Qaeda. They have not done so. Worse still, ISIS Khorasan is now present no doubt they are fighting with the Taliban for, for primacy within Afghanistan, but they are a serious terrorist group and they are responsible for the deaths of 13 Americans at Hamid Karzai Airport. Other terrorist groups too are returning to Afghanistan as they see this ungoverned space as an opportunity to once again consolidate their efforts and fight against the West. They seek to conduct attacks in the United States, in Europe, and against Americans around the globe. The terrorist threat today is worse specifically because we withdrew from Afghanistan in the way and the manner in which we did. Uh, to Mr. Stimson, uh, the final report of Obama's review task force, which was completed under the direction of Assistant Attorney General Matt Olson, notes that there are many challenges to prosecuting Gitmo detainees in Article Three courts. These include statutes of limitation, lack of jurisdiction at the time the offenses were committed. Of the 240 cases that the task force reviewed, only 36 were deemed suitable to investigate further for charging, and only 12 were recommended for charging uh, in either our court system or the military commissions. So to you, sir. For the remaining Gitmo detainees, is prosecution of the United States Civilian Court there an option? Thank you, Senator Grassley, for your question. Um, <clears throat> the, que the answer really is it's hard to tell from where I sit today. I mean, as Ms. Jeston and I both have had the privilege of being federal prosecutors, I'm clearly a fan of the use of federal courts in appropriate cases. Uh, and to your question, uh, Matt Olson and his team uh, scrubbed uh, the evidence available in uh, the Gitmo detainee files to assess whether, one, they were law war detainees, two, whether or not the appropriate disposition of them would be either better be done in federal district court or in military commissions. And they recommended one, you know, some for one and some for the other. The problem, Senator, is that um, these detainees were not captured in a place like in a city where there was crime scene tape and preservation of evidence and the rest of it. And so it's very likely that the evidence may not even exist to be able to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt in federal district court uh, under the statutes available to even prosecute them. So although they may be and are law of war detainees, I think that the chances of their being able to be prosecuted in federal district court are, are low. Uh, Professor Jaffer, what are some of the risks of bringing getting all DDs to the United States? What could happen, for example, to their immigration status? Uh, is release in the United States even a possibility? 
Well, Senator Grassley, I think these are very serious questions. We don't know today what the Supreme Court would do if we were to voluntarily bring these detainees into the United States and hold them here, try them here, whether in law or detention or otherwise. We know that in a limited fashion at Guantanamo Bay, the Supreme Court has afforded certain rights to these detainees, again, foreign nationals captured in an ongoing conflict. So they may get additional rights. If we bring them to trial in federal court, as Mr. Simpson correctly pointed out, what about the Fourth Amendment? What about chain of custody? What about the rules of evidence? There are dozens and dozens of questions that attach to bring these detainees into the United States, even in law of war detention, that are unanswered. And we don't know what will happen. And it raises the question of if these detainees are tried and exonerated, what will happen to them? Will they be held then in immigration detention because they are in the U.S.'s custody but aren't entitled to stay in the United States? If so, what happens if, like at Gitmo, they're ineligible for transfer, we can't get the right security assurances, and they remain in immigration detention for a long period? Then we have the potential for the Supreme Court prior precedent to suggest they may have to be released into the United States. Now, the odds of that, to be sure, are quite low. That being said, they are not zero, given the Supreme Court's precedent on the question of detention in the United States, rights for detainees, and immigration detention. And so we have to consider those facts also as we think about what to do with these detainees and whether bringing them to the United States at this point makes good sense. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Grassley. Senator Feinstein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 